A dairy farm's reproductive profitability is affected by accurate detection of heat and timely insemination of the cows. These are the main factors that affect a dairy farm's conception rates. A farmer's ability to detect heat is crucial in the reproductive performance of a dairy farm as early or late insemination may lead to conception failure. This is why Samuel from All Cloud Dairy is exhibiting today. So wale ambao wanapea hiyo service ya AI kwa wakulima wetu wanakuja pale kwa kampuni wanasema mbegu ambayo wanataka kama ni kama ni CRI tuko nazo kama ni Cagric kama ni Coopers ndio mbegu zote tuko nazo kwa kampuni so yule ambaye anapea anakuja anachukua hizo mbegu tuseme like 10 15 strews or 20 anakaa nazo kwa mtungi yake Kwa hivyo wakati ambapo wata receive call from the farmer, he will just give the farmer the time ambayo wataenda pare kwa mkulima. So hiyo time ikifika ni kuchukua motopaiki yake, mtungi yake, anaenda kwa mkulima, anasub. Akisha sub huyo mkulima, akisha sub huyo mkulima, tuna kitambu ambacho huwa tunapea mkulima wetu receipt. Na hiyo receipt, inabeba uh, service, uh, majina ya service provider iko na namba yake ya simu iko na unit yule mkulima haya tuko na ngombe kama ako na hiyo tag namba yake inawekwa hapo hiyo tag namba kama ngombe huyo ngombe ni lazima awe na jina anaweka jina yake the breed kama ni freshian anaweka kwa breed anaweka ni freshian then the sire and then we have the the, 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 the bone. Sasa akisha afanya hivo, unaona kwa ire straw, ambayo imebeba ire begu. Akisha pea, akisha weka hiyo begu kwa huyo ngombe, hiyo straw ni razima, hiyo adamani na hii receipt, with all details from the farmer. Hiyo uh, straw, hiyo adamani na hiyo receipt, mukurima, ajiweke. Na huwa tunajaribu kwa advice our farmers ile ambayo amewekewa hapa yule ngombe ambayo amewekewa pale kama amechaguliwa ngombe ambaye mwenye anatasafiwa hiyo uh, dume maybe for example tuseme ni ni equity tuseme ni david from agric anaweka ni freshian amepewa david kwa hivyo david akona code yake kwa straw so tuna huwa tuna advice wa uh, nini uh, wakulima wetu Ukipewa, ukipewa mbegu, ngobe wako wako wakipewa mbegu na awe ni David kodi yake ambayo umeandikiwa pale kwa, uh, kwa receipt ni lazima yadamane na kodi na jina yenye iko kwa kwa straw ndio tuweze uh, kusaidia wakulima wetu mbegu zetu huwa zina range kutoka 1500 mpaka 1800 kulingana na ile ambavyo mkulima anahitaji one of the benefits of artificial insemination is the milk production. Timely AI will benefit the farmer greatly in his or her quest to upgrade the dairy herd and increase milk production. This is what someone wants for each farmer to take home from the stand. Ambao wanakufanya upime maziwa lita therabini. Kuwa na ngobe moja ambaye utaweza kupea mbegu mzuri akupatie hiyo lita therabini. Na hile chakura ulikuwa umepandia ngobe kumi uweze kwa kurisha huyu ngobe moja akirist kwa mda mbele. Kwa kulima tumewakaribisha sana katika orukarao daily. Aside from that, Okalao Dairy also offers farmers extension services as David explains to a farmer here. Bapo tuko na upande wa AI, tuko na upande wa kupima mchanga, tuko na upande wa kukuza chakura ama mimea ya kuwapatia ware ngombe ambao tuko nao. Na pia pale tuko na milk hygiene, usafi wa maziwa. Pia pande hii gine tuko na bank ambayo tuko nayo pale kwa karaunde hile ambapo mkukua tunapatuna letia wakulima wetu. Na pale mwisho tuko na hile maziwa ambayo tumejitengenezea. Kwa hivyo hii leo, mimi nimeweza kusimamia upande wa AI tunafundisha wakulima wa kulima vile ambavyo wataweza kupata ngombe wazuri 
Still on the dairy sector, we talked to Julia Zinzi of Al Kalao Dairy about all matters quality. The quality of raw milk is the primary factor determining the quality of milk products. Good quality milk products can be produced only from good quality raw milk. The hygienic quality of milk is of crucial importance in producing milk and milk products that are safe and suitable for their intended uses. There are so many things, things that patch up together to form the term quality. So what, basically what we do, we make sure that everything that is received at the plant is of the best quality and they are up to the par, the standard and the requirement of that company. Yeah. Okay, we run tests through some of them are laboratory tests and some are just sensory organoleptic. Yeah, we call them organoleptic tests. Then you use your senses. So you can use the eyes, the nose, everything, but you don't taste raw milk. So you make sure the whole product, which is the raw milk, it meets the requirement. That is, the milk have to be clean. That is, organoleptic test. Smell, it's a cowish smell, which is supposed to be the original smell of the raw milk. And then from there, you take it to the plant. From there, we do the platform test, which are GABA fat test. We basically test for fats. We have the reactometer test where, the, where we check still the density of that milk, whether it is adulterated or it's wholesome. And then we have the lactic acid test to test the acidity of that milk or basically the pH. And then finally we have the peroxide test yeah, to test whether it's adulterated with some preservatives. Then when you are certain the milk is very okay to pass all those tests. Then before we do the packaging or the processing of any product, we subject it further to some test the microbial test, where, where we do test the antibiotics, any drug residue, and then the microbial load, we call it 10 minutes resurging test, where we check the microbial load of that milk, and it have to be to the minimum, so we can proceed to the processing. Yeah, when the milk passes all those tests, then we receive the milk from the farmers or the transporters. Okay. As you can see on Julia's stand, it is filled to the brim with yogurt. We're curious to find out what standards apply to yogurt production. When you come to processing part of it, you're more strict on the parameters. So you have to take that milk or that batch through a thorough test. Maybe when you do 10 minutes resurging test, when you come to processing, we extend the a little bit of time, we do it like that minute or one hour. We check the microbial road, then you do the antibiotic test. Then you don't only test the tetracyclines, the teractams, no, we do the quinorones and sulfonamides. If that milk passes that test, then it's good for the processing and it have still the butter fat content, the density, everything must be okay. But now this one goes to a higher level because of the drug residues and everything. Kenyans across the country love yogurt. However, with the recent cases of milk contamination, as revealed by a study by Egerton University in 2019, concerns are rising. The same case applies to yogurt, which is a milk product. For consumer, Julia has some handy tips that you can use to tell if your yogurt has been adulterated or not. There are quality parameters of a yogurt. You the way you need to judge there. You have to judge it with the physical appearance. You know, that is not yogurt. It have to be that smooth and silky. Then the taste, it have to have that creamy taste. You get it? And then it should not have that high acid level. We call it high acidity. So it is well preserved. When you taste it, it's okay. It's not that bitter. It's not that flat. They are between. After the yogurt has undergone these processes, it is now time to pack and sell. Yogurt, we have two types of flavors. We have the vanilla and strawberry. 
packaging, we package 250 ml and 500 ml. Okay, the price for 250 ml, currently we are selling it at 40 shillings, 500 ml, 70 shillings. So you can find it in our plant, but now we are piloting the project. Slowly, slowly we are penetrating the market. But basically if you need it, you can find it in our plant. Kenya's dairy industry is facing a crisis due to heavy investments in processing plants and reduced milk production. Reduction of milk production is caused by extended drought periods associated with climate change. As a result, there will be overcapacity in milk processing and reduced supply. In addition to this, it will make things difficult for farmers to feed their cows. Vaishali Maldi is solving this problem. We have a new product that we're launching in the market, mainly to benefit dairy farmers, to be able to preserve their fodder for a long period of time. Our product is called Mama Silage Bags. It's an innovative technology putting seven different layers of polyethylene material with an EVOH barrier that stops any oxygen transpiration into the bag. So the, the benefit of the oxygen barrier is realized when the nutritional quality of the fodder is maintained throughout its storage life. So the fodder uh, is preserved for up to one year without deteriorating its quality. The bag is reusable multiple times. It's a very strong bag made with seven different layers. So it's quite difficult to break into or puncture. And the bag is also 100% recyclable. It's got a secondary use of being able to cut it into uh, a sheet and use it for drying your maize or any other grains. And it makes sure there's no aflatoxin penetration from the ground into the product you're drying. The bag has numerous uses that both a small-scale and large-scale farmer could utilize. We can use it for silage mainly, but we do have another product with similar properties that is used in storage of grains. Aside from the Mama silage bags, PIL also has a product catered to grain storage for up to one year. Our grain storage bag is a hermetic bag, same technology with an oxygen barrier. It helps in preservation of grain through depleting all the oxygen inside the bag. Therefore, any weevil infestation, mold infestation or aflatoxins dies because there's no oxygen present for them to survive on. So it's an airtight bag. You have to tie it with a cable tie or a bladder, what in the common terms. And once you close it, making sure that the closure is secure and there's no air penetrating, you can store your grain for up to one year without losing its quality. As you can see here, Vaishali and her team are keen on educating farmers how they can use these bags. In addition, they also carry out on-farm demonstrations and trainings for extension managers and on-field officers with various partners in the dairy chain to empower the farmers. Technology has been brought in in Kenya as uh, to be able to benefit uh, dairy farmers to have a constant stable milk production throughout the year and to make sure that when milk is produced it's in the best of qualities because there's no aflatoxin in the in the silage that they would be feeding their animal it's also benefiting dairy farmers by um, having a constant nutritional fodder throughout the year despite the dry seasons whether it's wet or dry you still have fodder available to be able to feed your animal therefore increasing their income stabilizing it and making uh, uh, improving their livelihood in general the take home message is while you have green fodder make sure you have a storage solution to be able to preserve it for the dry periods because now we we have unpredictable weather patterns and when they have dry weather there's no milk production and this makes their income go low and they have no idea of what to do and when they have wet when it's wet and it's raining there's a lot of green fodder available and therefore they can use it to preserve it for the longer period of time and our bag is a solution to be able to help them preserve it for up to one year but we do know it's going to rain before one year so we have a facebook page called mama silage bags find us on facebook or write to us on sales at pil.co.ke we are manufacturers of packaging material so anything else that you require in terms of plastic packaging it's available from us we have a physical address. We're located in Nairobi on Lunga Lunga Road, 01 Nadume Road. <laughs>